Have you ever find it difficult to start using test-driven development or TDD? In this video, I'm going to show you a way called TDD Zombies to make this process simpler. Let's get started. For this video, we are trying to solve this problem. We are given a simple string of letters, and then we are going to perform something called run length encoding. Simply means we want to compress this string into this one. Well, how we are going to do that? Simply, we are going to calculate the same successive character, right? For, for example, here we have four A's, simply it will be four A's. Then three B's, two C's, and so on, okay? This is actually an interview question, that's why we have this kind of constraint, like you can assume in this chain to be encoded have no digits, this is critical, and consists only of alphabetic characters, right? You can assume the string is decoded is valid. So you are not going to implement it in a way that is much, much faster, like performance-wise or something like that. We are going just to do a demonstration of TDD zombies using this problem. So what is TDD zombies or TDD guide by zombies? This is actually a methodology provided by James Grenin, right? In which this is an acronym represent six or five steps. So consider zombies in two dimensions or two axes. On the y-axis, we have zero, one, many. This is the zoom. And then this is actually the test scenarios you are going to write. And you need to consider this axis, which check for boundary behavior, interfaces, like you need to create good interfaces, and also exercise exceptions. All of that are creating simple scenarios and simple solutions, okay? We are going to make this problem. You can read this article, this is a good article, and also a good demonstration of circular buffer, right? He's going to write the test and everything while explaining everything. It's actually written in C, you can follow it along. We are going to do a different but simple problem in Kotlin right? So this is our problem. First, we start by writing test, of course. So we create a new Kotlin file. So we can start by generating a test. Let's call it the zero test, okay? Let's just make sure that everything is working fine. All right, awesome, it's passing. So what is the first test we need to write? Simply, it's a test that represents zero cases, okay? So simply, we need to have a method that's called run length encoding. Then we can see if we need class for that, okay? So what is actually the minimum case we can give it to this function, right? It's simply empty string. Nice. And then we need to check the result of this one with the assert, of course. And you assert equals, like the result of this one should be an empty string, of course. Okay, so something like that. Of course, we don't have this method, so we need to create it. Let's create this function. And let's call it string or input. And are going to return a string. Now I'm going to return a string to make the test fail, of course. So because if you return a normal string like that, the test will pass, okay? Let me just return it like the following. I'm going to extract this into separate class. First, let's move it here, and then press F6 in order to refactor it, in order to take it to a different file. It will be to this file, of course. It is private actually, but I'm going to put it in the normal CRC, okay? And refactor it, of course, continue. It's going to fail but I'm going to take the private from here. Let's increase the size, and then everything is good. We can run the test, see it fail. It's failing, fine. We need to make sure it's failing for the right reason. Expected, expected. Okay, actually expected is not the same. You can see it here, so let's return what is required. Run the test again. Everything's passing. Awesome, good. Now, we need to think about the case of one. Zero, one, and then many. Okay, what is the case of one? I'm not going to name the test anything fancy. I'm just following the pattern. Let's call it one. What is a one here? One for me, it's simply an A, right? What expect in return is one A, okay? I'm going to do a bunch of that. Run all the tests, of course. Always make sure to run all the tests. Exactly, this is not passing. Expected one A, and then we are returning nothing, okay? So here, of course, if you return 1a, the first test will fail. So make sure to return the simplest thing. What I can do is simply that if input is not empty, for example, if it is not empty, I'm going to return 1a. Okay, run it. All the tests should pass. Awesome. Now I'm going to do some kind of triangulation in which I'm going to make it be here. And then I should have 1b to force me to create this one, to create an implementation for the one. Exactly, nothing is passing. And here I'm going to use this thing, this input in some manner. If it is not empty, I can do the following. Input dot first, okay? And then if I run it, it should work. Awesome, nice. Now we should think about other cases, which is the many case, right? The many case here, you can interpret it as only one character or only on one character. It means like this one is still one character. 
Okay, you can do it in one triangulation. Still, it is one. Let's do it. It is one character. The beauty in Kotlin, you can omit this one. You can do the following like that. This is awesome. Rename it Shuri a character. Awesome. So, this one I want 3a and 2b, like the following. Awesome. Now, if I run this, this one wouldn't work. The 3a wouldn't work. Nice. So what is happening is this thing. I should think about this one. So what I can do, I can do the here, the input dot the length, like that. This should work. Exactly everything is passing. So you can see the solution right now. I know this is dumb solution right now, but I'm trying to create the test. Like this is the thing. My full attention is about the test right now to create a good solid test that will check many things, right? Now I can go to many. I can do the following, many cases, and then I can expect the following, for example. We can start with something very simple. For example, let's do BB, like the following. So it will be 3A and 2B, like the following. Of course, we are going to run everything. It won't pass. Of course, the many isn't passing because it's considering 5A, it's stupid, of course. So let's make sure on how to implement this here. Like in the beginning, whenever they told you the problem in the first time, you would think about counting everything and then creating some kind of map. But in test-driven development, we don't think about the solution immediately, right? We try to bring it one test by one test, right? So here, this wouldn't work. So this is actually about the current count of the letter, right? So here, let's first invert it. Okay, so if it is empty, I'm going to return. Then I'm going to think about this one. This is much better. Run the test, make sure only the last test isn't passing. Nice, awesome. Let me just delete that. So I have two problems. I have to think about this one, which is the count. And I have to think about this one, which is the actual or the current uh, letter, okay? I can do this with simple for and simple count number. So I can do the following, like what is the current character, the current char, it will be empty. And what is the current count? And I will start as simple as that. I will start with the char, and then I will start like the char will be replaced here, and then the count will be replaced here. So simply, we are going to loop, of course, in the indices of the input. Like I can do it like the following: input dot indices, indices like the following. It's an integer. Age. It will start from zero until the length minus one. Nice. Here we are going to do an if, right? If the current character, not the current character, is the same as the input dot i like following okay this wouldn't work i need to convert this to string if the current character is the same i'm going to increase the count all right else if it is not the same then i'm going to okay i need to create this one right so here is i'm going to do it i'm going to create a result it's simple string always think about the simplest thing and then it will be result because if it is not the same it means it has changed, right? So I need to encode the current one, right? So it will be plus equal like the following, and then it will be the current count and in the current char. Nice. And then this will be the result, but we need to update the current character. So here the current character, it will be the current character we have that is changed, right? Which is this one. And what is the current count? It is actually zero. No, it is one because we are counting this one. So this one should result, the result should work. And let's run all the tests, of course. Nothing is passing. That's the beauty of the test, of course. So what is in the one, what is happening? One, zero. Okay, this is actually a good thing because we are in the else, right? Because in the first time, this won't be equal to A. What I can do, I can make the following as one and the input here dot the first because I'm sure it's not empty, right? I can make this to a string. I can rerun everything. So still the one is not, isn't working because we have one A. If you go to the many, you are going to see it's still four A. So it's not actually changing, right? So this is the thing, this is the I. Okay, now here it is one problem because we are starting from zero again, right? We should not, we should start from one until the last one, which is the length. All right, let's rerun everything. So for 1a, it isn't working because it will go in the one, and then since it is only one character, it won't make this. 
So we need to make sure that the last iteration get cut, which is here, I think. So if you run this, I think it should pass. Exactly everything is passing, okay? So this solution is passing for this test. What is the next test we need to create? Because we think about the zero, the one, one character, and the main. I'm going to do one exact same thing, but replacing three A, after I'm going to do another A's and two C's, okay? So it will be four A, C, C, no, two C's, I mean, two C's, run everything, everything is passing. That's awesome. Now we complete it with the zoom, which is the zero, one, and many. We are also thinking about the simplest solution and the simplest scenarios, starting from simple scenarios and decreasing. Now we need to exercise some exceptions. So in exceptions, we already had one exception, which is an empty string. But what about having an actual number inside it? Let's call another test with exception, like following. But instead of testing this one, what I'm going to test is the following. Let's put four here, okay? Now here, we should like have a requirement. What should happen if there is a digit here? Should we, for example, print the same thing? Or should we throw an error, for example, or what? So here, let's pretend we are going to throw an exception, right? So the way to do it in JUnit, I think it is assert throws, right? Yeah, assert throws. Here, what is the reified throwable? Let's think about, for example, illegal argument exception, for example. Right, let's make sure they are, we are throwing this one. And here I'm going to run the following. And this one should work. And let's run everything, of course. This one shouldn't work, I mean, exception, exactly, it didn't. Now we forgot step, which is after each successful passing of the test, we need to refactor a bit. I didn't, but because I'm just trying to experiment or show you how this TDD zombie works, right? So here, if it is not empty, and then if it contain a digit, right? You can check in the beginning all the things, but this isn't a good thing because you are passing everything and then we are doing this one again. What you can do here at this moment, you can check if the input in i is digit. If it is the case, then throw a legal argument exception. What you are doing? Argument exception, yes. Write it, exactly. But this wouldn't work, exactly. This wouldn't work if it is the first character. So I can do the same thing here, and I can put the four here. But it's, it's exact, it won't work. So you see, this is the mindset you should have as a test-driven developer, right? Every time you should think about what will cause your test to fail, okay? This is the thing. And this will prompt you to create a good code. So yeah, exactly, we need to do the first thing also. Like, because we are doing it this outside here, okay, we have to do the same thing if the first one throw it, then run everything. This is the worst code I ever wrote, right? This is really not good looking code, but actually it's doing the job. So this is the thing with test driven development using zombies, right? Here is the description one more time. We are checking for boundary cases. The boundary cases for us is either zero strings or maybe like one million string, we can do that, right? And then we are ex exercising the exception. And we thought about the interface in the beginning, like this is thinking about the interface, what it should have, what it should return, maybe doing this as a receiver, like I don't know, since we are doing in Kotlin, but I think the interface is fine for the moment. It is actually a top level function. This is also fine, it's returning a string. And then we have a lot of things here. For example, we can improve this result. Since we have a text, what you can do, we can create a string builder. Actually, this would be really cool in the memory instead of using like for bigger strings, of course. Huh? So with the string builder, what I can do here, I can append, the following string, same thing, appending here, to string at the end, since we have tests, this is the beauty with the test, I'm making sure everything is passing, I can make this to val, the var character, okay, everything seems fine for the moment, we could have other solution, for example, having a map and then counting, putting the map, no, no, I don't think this is fine, this is fine, I think, yeah, this is fine, solution for the moment is fine, I'm not liking doing this multiple times here and here also, it's duplication of logic. But yeah, this is fine, it's passing the test. We have that now the actual name of the test should be renamed because I'm trying just to explain the concept behind it, okay?
So consider reading this article, please. And here there is this circular buffer. This is a good exercise in order to implement this one. And it is not just for algorithmic stuff. Like you may say that test-driven development is only for this kind of problem where you have an input and you have an output. I would say yes, this would work fine, but also for real life scenarios like developing Android application. For example, you may run into some problems. You can use system development in the bigger as acceptance test driven development and in smaller parts when developing your view model, for example, your UI state and anything else. All right. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching this video to the end. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and always see you in the next videos. Assalamu alaikum.